Kelly Sefalu, and today I'm going to talk to you all about borders. And I want to tell you that the borders are one of the more important parts of your quilt top. It's the last thing that you're going to add to your quilt, and it can really make a difference on how your quilt looks. So let's take a look at a sample that I brought today. I have a quilt sample here that I made for a beginning quilt class that I'm going to be teaching, and I'm using Alex Anderson's new book, Make Your First Quilt. So this is uh, pattern is in the book. And I'm at the point where I want to add my borders, and I've already added two of the side borders on here. And I think it's really important when you're adding your borders that you measure them to fit your quilt top cut them to the size that you want, and then pin them and sew them on. So let's first talk about cutting those border strips. So when you cut your border strips, you want to think about whether to cut them on the crosswise grain or the lengthwise grain. And let me show you what the difference is. I've got some fabric here, and I've got it folded as it came off the bolt. And down here on the bottom is my selvage. And typically when you cut your strips of fabric, you're going on the crosswise grain. So it's going from selvage to selvage. It runs this way. The lengthwise grain is parallel to the selvage. So it's running this way. And the lengthwise grain is more stable than the crosswise grain. It's stronger. So at times, if you're doing a wall hanging, you're probably going to want to cut some of your strips on the lengthwise grain and some on the crosswise grain. And I've got a little picture I can show you that might help to um, explain that a little bit better. But when you have a, a quilt that's hanging, you want the strongest um, weave to be on the going down. And so here's a picture, let me just show you, it'll make a little bit more sense. So here's a picture of a, a small quilt and I've got my side borders here and that's where my lengthwise grain is. And on the top and bottom, I've got the crosswise grain. So the crosswise grain is running this way and the lengthwise grain for this piece is is going down. So when you hang the quilt, that weight is going to be hanging on that lengthwise grain and it's going to be less tendency for it to sag um, over time. If you need to piece your border strips because they're not long enough and you need a longer border, you can um, piece them on a diagonal seam or a straight seam. And the difference, I prefer the diagonal seam that looks like this very similar to how you would piece your binding strips together, but it tends to hide that seam a little bit better than here's a, a straight seam like this. And a lot of times on a straight seam, depending on the print, it's going to catch your eye. Your eye is going to just stop right there at that seam, whereas the diagonal seam um, tends to be a little bit more um, hidden. So once you've got your strips long enough, you're going to measure your quilt top. And for this one, I'm going to be measuring from this side to this side because I want to add the borders um, on the top and bottom. So I like to take my two strips and I'm going to take both of them and I'm going to lay them right across the center of my quilt top. So here's the center. And I'm going to match this end, which I've already cut the selvages off of. I'm going to match that with this edge. And then I'm going to smooth it out over to the other end. And then I'm going to cut it. And typically you would cut it even with this edge. But my little tip is to give yourself an extra half an inch. So let me get my cutting mat in place. So I like to give myself an extra half an inch beyond the, the quilt top size. So I'm going to put my ruler here, cut there, and then I'm going to take my border strip and I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to find the center. And I'm going to give it a little finger press so I have a crease there. And I'm going to then find the center of my quilt top. And for this quilt top, 
I know that my center is right here. Typically, you'd fold your quilt top in half and do the same thing. So right sides together, I'm going to match that crease with the center of the quilt, and I'm going to pin it. And then because I gave myself an extra half inch on the, the length of my border strip, I want to leave a quarter of an inch overhang on each end. And the reason I've done that is so when I, after I've sewn the border strip onto my quilt, it gives me something to trim up. I can square those corners. A lot of times when you add um, a piece of fabric, the ends tend to bow out or they bow in. And with this technique, you're gonna be able to um, trim and really square those corners up. So first I'll pin the top and bottom edges, leaving that quarter of an inch overhang. And then you, it's really important that you pin well for your borders. So I pin about every um, three inches. It's about the width of your hand apart. And this really keeps the border in place. And, and let me just talk about why this whole process is important. What you wanna avoid with the, the quilt borders is you don't wanna end up with a wavy border. And the first few times that I made a quilt top, my borders were wavy. And what I used to do is just take a strip of fabric and sew it onto my quilt top without pinning, without measuring or anything. And then at the end, I would just trim even with the edge of my quilt. And what happens is those feed dogs are underneath feeding the quilt top through and the top layer, the border fabric is getting pushed along and you end up with more border fabric than you do with quilt top. So pinning it and measuring it first is gonna avoid that. And, um, and if it's also, let me go back, we're also creating a square quilt top. So you want your quilt top, if it's a rectangle or a square, to be even, you want both sides to be the same um, measurement, top and bottom to be the same measurement. And typically, we're not perfect, we're handling that quilt a lot, and usually it's, uh, there's a little bit of a discrepancy between those measurements. So if you measure through the center and cut your border strips to that center measurement, there's a better chance that you're gonna get your sides to get even once you add those borders that are now the same size. Okay, let's go back to the, the quilt top here. I'm going to finish um, pinning it and I'm gonna sew it and then we'll show you how I can trim up those corners. Okay, I just sewed my border strips on and I had this light bulb moment that sometimes the border strip is longer or shor shorter than the side of your quilt top because we measured through the center. And if that's the case, you wanna make sure that the the side that has more excess fabric that you're trying to ease in, that you feed that through your sewing machine so that it's on the bottom. And those feed dogs will help ease in that excess fabric without creating any tucks or puckers. So something to think about also when you're sewing on those border strips. Let me go down and show you um, how my corners look and the little bit of trimming that I'm gonna do. So here's one of my corners and I, I left that quarter of an inch overhang, so now I can trim that up. So I'm just gonna place my ruler down here on that corner. You can see there's a tiny bit of a flare out here that I'm gonna be able to trim. So I'll trim this side edge, and then I'm gonna trim this edge right here. And that's really gonna give me a nice square corner, and I'll do that on all four sides. So that's a basic quilt border lesson, and if you happen to be working on a quilt that has a pieced border, something as simple as this one in Alex's book, or even a more complex design, I think it's important that you measure your pieced sections as you go along to make sure they're coming out the right size. The sooner that you notice a problem, the easier it will be to take care of. You can either adjust that quarter inch seam allowance if you need to, um, and make those adjustments soon, sooner than later, and then you'll end up having a piece border that fits your quilt top.